Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the draw shape tool. So we're going to left click to select the draw shape and you will notice an interface opening up. We have several options in terms of our drawing mode. We can either do a point to point style draw where uh, we are creating points. Let me uh, demonstrate here by simply creating some points. This will create our shape. Our current uh, shape texture is black. Uh, maybe we don't particularly like that shape, so select it by left clicking on it and then clicking delete or pressing delete on your keyboard. So that is one way in which we can create a shape. Now we do have the snap to grid option and once again we are presented with the center of the grid or the corner of the grid. I'm going to select the corner of the grid and once again show you the uh, point to point drawing technique. Notice now the red point is selecting the corners and again this allows me to create shapes based on a geometric shape for example. If I were to use the center point and now start drawing, it now is drawing in the center point of each of these squares. Again allowing me to create some very interesting shapes uh, but again on a geometric scale. If I deselect this of course I'm free to create the shape in any direction I particularly like we are not linked to any particular space whatsoever. The alternative is a freehand draw. Once I select that, it gives us the option of a circular brush tip or a square brush tip, and it gives us the same radius, two squares. So if I select the square brush tip and move over the canvas, you'll notice now that it is a square shape. And again, we can use the snap to grid if we want it to snap to a specific grid point corners I find usually are the best. So that'll allow us to create a single shape which is a square shape. I'm going to just do that over there or if I create a circle still with snap to grid on I can create a circle. If I deselect that of course I can then draw a circular shape in freehand which is something new. Now what's going on here? Why do we have all of this happening? Well there are certain textures in this room that are on the above wall option which means that uh, textures placed onto the canvas will appear underneath. Notice we're starting to get some interesting effects. Now, this is where it starts to get really powerful in terms of our shape tool. So let's say we have a shape in this room. I'm going to create a black square, for example. So let's snap to grid and let's use the uh, center of the grid. I'm going to create a black square here in the center of the room. So there is a black square. Who knows where that's going? I have all of my options of outer shadow or inner shadow. Of course, we won't see that at the moment. We have an outline as well as if it's above walls. Does it need a key? Is it concealed or is it perhaps trapped? If it's trapped, of course, then our players will not see this um, when we go into the preview option. Now, we can select the object that we've created once we are finished and select Edit. This will allow us to come back into the shape layer and to either add or modify it as we so choose. If I change this shape down, I can deduct or subtract shapes from this original shape and then once I'm done I hit that finish shape option. We have our of course our opacity controller as well or we can simply select the texture for this brush tool by using the eyedropper and then selecting any texture that we have used already within the Dungeon Fog canvas and it will automatically change it to that. Now we can see that we have our outline which we can either have or not. That's entirely up to us. We can have an inner shadow which will create and look as if we are descending into that shape or we can have an outer shadow which will make it look as if it's sitting over and above the texture that is currently placed. Of course we can then give it a key or say that it is trapped um, or we can add jitter to it which will create a very curious organic shape, if you like. We can reduce the size of that jitter. We can increase the density of the jitter, making some very organic looking gaps or holes or all kinds of things. Really, the uh, your imagination is the limit here. So if I do that and uh, then we uh, go back to being a solid color of black, we're now starting to create a very interesting option in terms of maybe a hole that leads down to somewhere else, for example. We can play as we so choose. The important thing is to always finish that shape because when we create a new shape, it will create a new layer for us. So uh, that is important to bear in mind. And that is how you use the shape tool. 